Oh, sure, oh, of course, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Fanny, would, Fanny would say it was out in the Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's true. The trucks too. She told me a story. She right. we'll asked everyone to please gather underneath the shelter. Well, canopy. Some Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Did that fix it? I just flipped it. You know, I've been stopped from filming before. Huh? Please sit. I, I'm not going to sit. I'm, not, I'm really not. I, I just. I think we're tired enough or old enough to sit? Yeah, yeah. But I will sit if there's a chance to sit anywhere rather than stand. Yeah, so please sit. I'm here. Okay. Oh, Sorry for the delay, yeah, folks. Yeah. Even though the image looked horizontal, apparently it was showing vertically online. So okay. we just had to fix that. No oh. apologies. Oh, okay. So, and you can find the link by going to Chicago. so it's not searchable. Nobody can type in a name in YouTube. Okay? Thank you. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I
Tammy will always be Tammy. Debbie, I guess you're always Debbie, right? <laughs> yeah. But Paul is not Paul. I was Paul for South. For South? Yeah. Family, they still yeah. call Paul. Shorter than yeah. longer, <laughs> and I don't want to sit through this too long. Right. So I'll say, I got stuff to do. Yeah. And, and he's probably saying, Your mom's been calling me for a couple of days, and I said, I can't go yet. Mm. So he's probably. If I could have your attention, please. At this time, we're going to begin the funeral service here at the cemetery for Mr. Robert Schwartz. As we begin the service, I would ask if any of you have a cell phone or any other noise-making device, please turn it off at this time. Officiating the service here today is Rabbi Eitan Weiner Kaplow from Shir Hadash Synagogue in Wheeling. Good morning, everyone. We're about to begin the funeral services. And we begin with the ceremony called Kriya, the ceremony for the tearing of the ribbons. And so I'll ask those who are wearing the ribbons, Tammy and Paul, if you would join with me in Hebrew. We're going to repeat word for word in the Hebrew and then phrase by phrase in the English. Our rabbis teach that this is the moment when we recognize the full reality of our loss. Now is when we recognize the tear, the tear in our lives, the tear in our family, the tear in our hearts. And so we tear a piece of cloth to symbolize that tear. Please repeat with me word for word. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Dayan HaEmet. And in English, Holy One of Blessing. Your presence fills creation. Your presence fills creation. You are the judge of truth. You are the judge of truth. And now you can tear those ribbons either from the side or the bottom and just tear it halfway or a quarter. But listen to the sound. <laughs> listen to the sound and know of the tear. There it is. In the traditional Jewish world, you'll wear these ribbons for as long as 30 days, moving them from garment to garment. In the liberal Jewish world, you can wear them that long, of course. But if you wish, you'll wear them shorter, maybe for as long as you're sitting shiva, as long as you wish. My blessing to you is that healing will come soon. May healing come soon. And so we begin our service. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Dayan ha-emet Holy One of Blessing, your presence fills creation. You are the judge of truth. Adonai natan 
ואדוני לקח, יהי שם אדוני מבורך. The eternal one gives, the eternal one takes away. May the name of the eternal one be blessed. And so we gather here this day to remember Robert Schwartz, to remember Bob, to remember the fullness of his life, the wholeness of his life, his joy of life, his joy of teaching, devotion to family. There's so many, so many stories to share. Nevertheless, as we say our farewell, we do so as our ancestors have done by searching for comfort through the words of the Psalms, through readings of memorial, and through prayer. And so I ask everyone who has gathered here this day, both at the cemetery and those joining us online, to join with Bob's family, with children Tammy and Alan and Paul and Deborah, with grandchildren Samantha and Zeke and Abigail, with great-granddaughter Rosalie Ruth, with uh, brothers-in-law, uh, sisters-in-law, Ronald and Fran, Sheila, Anne, and Fred. We join together as a community of family and friends as together we remember. Mizmor le David Adonai ro'i lo echzar Vino te sheyahar bitzeni Al me menuchot yenahaleini These words in the Hebrew, they introduce the 23rd Psalm. The Eternal One is my shepherd, I shall never be in need. God has me lie down in green pastures, leads me beside still waters, restores my soul. You lead me in paths of righteousness for the sake of your name. And even when I walk in the valley of the darkest of shadows, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You have set a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil, my cup overflows. For surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the eternal one forever. In the rising of the sun and in its going down, we will remember him. In the blowing of the wind and the chill of winter on a cold day like today, we will remember him. In the opening of the buds and the rebirth of spring, we will remember him. In the blueness of skies and the warmth of summer, we will remember him. In the rustling of leaves and the beauty of autumn, we will remember him. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we will remember him. When we are weary and in need of strength, we will remember him. When we are lost and sick at heart, we will remember him. When we have joys we crave to share, we will remember him. And when we have achievements that are based on his, we will remember him. So long as we live, Bob Schwartz too will live. For he is now a part of us as we remember him. We are an ancient people and we are well acquainted with grief in the valley of shadows. Death and sorrow are not strangers to us. Yet the centuries have taught us that a good name endures forever. And so with Job we say Adonai Natan. God, you've given. You've given us a loved one who will not be forgotten. And for all that was good and enduring in Bob's life, we offer the deepest thanks of our hearts. Adonai Lakach, God, you've taken away. And so we pray for strength to heal our broken hearts. And then we say, Yehishem Adonai Mevorach. Blessed be the name of God, now and forever. told me a bit about Bob and about his life, how he was born and raised in Chicago, 
son of Alexander and Hermine. He was older brother to Ed. He told me how he suffered from Crohn's disease for so many years until they figured it out and brought him comfort. Spent a lot of time in the hospital as a, as a kid. He told me how he went on to Teachers College in Chicago and taught in Chicago public schools for an elementary school for, uh, for, for 20 years history and general education love plays writing them directing them for his students he told me how he met ruth early on in high school and they were married 1957 and started their family with the birds of their children of tammy and paul there are so many stories to share so many stories and so I'd like to call on Ronald and then Paul to speak. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, I've been honored by Tammy to read her words about her father, Bobby Robert Schwartz. And these are her wonderful words. Thank you all for participating in this service. Your kind thoughts and support mean a lot to us. My father and I traveled and giggled around the world. He was fun on a date and fearless. He had a love of life that was incredible. Whenever he was faced with a new task or activity, he would look at me and say, it will be an adventure. My father loved children, he loved teaching. His principal would always say to him, you may have trouble with the paperwork, but you are a most amazing teacher. He is still even in contact with many of his grammar school students. Every summer, the students would have a picnic and Bobby was always invited. He was amazed and pleased that these people, now adults, remembered him so fondly. They would regale him with stories about how he changed their lives. My father was quiet, but a wondrous human being. He will always be my hero. And I would like to just say briefly that Bobby Schwartz, Bobby loved life, and he loved it with a sense of humor, and life loved him back. And as we all know, he loves to, loved to travel and now I think he goes on a most amazing journey to reunite with his loved Ruth, his parents, his brother, and uh, we will always remember him. So hi everyone, my name's Paul, dad called me number one son and uh, uh, it's a little surreal doing this on Zoom, I must admit, although he would have said, uh, hey, it's going to make for a good story. I think we even broke some city ordinances to be here from Arizona today, so he would have liked that. Um, Tammy and I met with the rabbi a couple days ago, Tuesday, and he said, I said, I wanted to say a few words today. And he said, well, you should write it down. You should write it down because, for one, you know, you might get nervous, you might forget what you're going to say, but also so you can pass your words on, you can pass them on to your children. They'll pass them on to their grandchildren. Uh, they're, they're watching right now, they're his grandchildren. And uh, I said, they're going to become a legacy. That's going to be how he's remembered. I'm like, shit, no pressure, right? <laughs> um, but uh, so I wrote it down, Rabbi. So, uh, and Dad would have appreciated this. So I wrote it on the back of a Yahtzee pad uh, in the hotel. Um, but here it is. So it's just, a, you know, and Dad would have said, you know, either memorize the speech or just write a few notes. Don't do either one. So... Um, and, you know, it's hard to put a label on Dad. He was, he was an extrovert. He was outgoing. But he, he didn't socialize a lot outside of work or family. But he loved to tell stories, tell speeches. But, uh, you know, you just really couldn't, you know, put any one name on him. He uh, married Orthodox. Uh, Ruth was, came from a very religious family. He was the opposite of Orthodox. I think uh, atheist may be the right word for it. But, um, but you know, he, uh, but he accepted the rituals. He loved them. He made the Jewish holidays fun. I, I think Passover was my favorite. 
we would, well, when we were small, we would go to my grandfather's and he would do it in Hebrew. But as uh, we grew older, my mom grew sick, we, we just did the immediate family at the house. And so that meant dad was in charge. And it was a whole different experience having a Passover Seder with him. Uh, he would he would have the Haggadah, which is like the playbook for Passover. And he would, you know, do the things like uh, yeah, spill the wine on the plate and things like that, break the matzah. But mom had to work on dinner, so she would go to the other side of the house. And that's always when it got interesting because you'd do <laughs> silly things or the story would take a turn. So, you know, you'd ask dad about, you know, what was um, the Jewish holiday, Passover, whatever it was. He said, oh, it's easy to remember Jewish holidays. They're all the same. They're trying to kill us, the Jews he's talking about, and we survived, so we celebrate. <laughs> that was pretty much it. But so he'd be telling the story, and you know, and uh, I'd be, oh, and them, and Moses took the Jews and got got in, them into the desert, and then Mom would leave, and then and then Moses' wife would come in and say, Moses, you're lost, Sa Sasha, I'm not lost. You're lost. I'm telling you, you never ask for directions, and you know, we'd start laughing and. And mom would start coming back and he'd, he'd somehow get it back to the story. So he'd say, and, and Sasha would say, I read the script. We're going to be here for 40 years. And, and then the Pharaoh recognized the Jews. And, and by now we were hysterical and he was continuing in the straight way. And mom would just say, what's so funny? And she wasn't stupid. She knew what he was doing, but she was just happy. We were laughing and having a good time together. So, you know, again, hard to put a label on him. You could call him a bookworm. He read voraciously, read a book or two a week. Um, but he also loved movies. He loved plays. He loved theater. And Tammy and I couldn't keep up with him. So, so many books we learned only through his words. We, he'd say, are you going to read this? And of course, no. He read 20 of this author, and we'd never get to any of them. So he'd give us the, I'd call the Schwartz Cliff Notes version of it. It'd be five minutes or maybe it'd be 30 minutes. But it was beginning, middle, and end, and he told the whole story just wonderfully. And so you never had to read the book. In fact, you didn't want to after that. You know, you might call him a hippie in a way. We were raised like hippies. There was no rules, no no curfews, no no censorship. He took me to an R-rated movie when I was 10. But uh, but on the other side of it, he, he had no vices. He, he, no, he didn't do drugs, he didn't drink, didn't smoke. He didn't, it's not like he thought they were evil. He just saw it had no traction to him. So, you know, again, you couldn't really put a label on him. I think if you had to put any label, it was, you know, as Tammy said, fun on a date. He was fun, he always made things fun. I mean, if we traveled, he'd find some obscure play we'd go see or some adventure he'd find us to do. Um, even at home, if it was an ordinary, already an ordinary activity, like, you know, doing the barbecue. If we were gonna do an outside barbecue, we didn't do it often, but it was, it was a whole event. He'd get the charcoal and, He'd say, you know, we got to go out and collect the sticks so we can build the fire on top of the charcoal. And, and it was a whole story. And I remember a couple of years later saying, Dad, I was over at this kid's house and they had this fluid you screwed on. I said, ah, that's, that's not how you do it. You know, <laughs> take all the fun out of it. But, uh, you know, so on the one hand, he, he knew how to have fun, but he also was a very hard worker. He, uh, he didn't retire until he was 80. And I would say, you know, he worked two, at least two jobs until he was 65 and he retired from teaching. And the funny thing, he was really good as a teacher. He was great with kids. He was great directing theater and those kinds of things. But he was incompetent at so many other things. He could not do anything mechanical. I think mom used to explain, well, you know, he was taught hammer bad, book good. You know, <laughs> that, uh, that explained it. But, uh, but he was great at getting jobs. So he could, you know, he would just talk his way in. I remember he told the story of when I was, um, was born. It was in the summer. And... Uh, he had, a, especially in the summer as a teacher, he had to have a second job. And uh, he, uh, he had just gotten fired from one. I think it was the milkman job where he got lost, the milk spoiled. And he didn't want to go to the hospital and say, I lost the job. So he had to do something. And he said, on the way, he got a job at a dry cleaner. He said, he went in there. He said, I want to be a dry cleaner. I want to learn everything about dry cleaning. I want to open my store one day and from the ground up and just had a baby. You got to give me a job anyway. He walked out with a job so he could tell mom that he, he'd lost one, but he got one. And probably his best second job, though, was teaching at the blind camp. He did, he directed there for many years. And, you know, that's where Tammy and I really got to see how good he was with kids and, and uh, just the fun we had. I mean, he uh, would write the words. They, he, he and mom would write the scripts and they'd write the words, the music. And uh, 
And I remember one was Cinderella became swinging fella and it was all about the war protest. And they just, they, it was just wonderful. Tammy and I got to be buddies. So we got to all, our job was to make sure, of course we got starring roles in the play, but we also uh, were, it was important we, that no one walked off the stage because these kids were blind and had wheelchairs, but he, he found a way to have fun with them. He take them bowling and movies and places. You just think this is impossible. Kids with autism and wheelchairs and blind and, and they all had a ball. So, you know, he's going to be remembered, I think, mostly from what I would call the Schwartzisms that we've learned from him, the language that, that we've, we've taken away. He had these expressions that came from all over. They might come from a book or a story or just a funny situation we had with him. Like, you know, we were at a restaurant and the food was just really bad. It was a Chinese restaurant. They had peanut butter and the egg rolls. The guy said, sir, would you like to wrap this up? He said, yes, wrap it up and throw it away. <laughs> so that was one we remembered. <laughs> I, uh, I think, you know, I call it situational humor. Mom would spill something on her dress and she'd go, I got to go change. She'd say, don't ever change. So that became <laughs> on her. You know, I think uh, he was at a wedding and the bride said, oh, I should have had chocolate truffles on the cake. And, uh, and he said, oh, maybe next time. So maybe next time became always something where ah, you're going to do You knew you're never going to do it again, but you'd, you'd say it anyway. So, you know, and then and then there were sayings that, you know, I don't think he'll, they'll, they'll be carried on, but I remember them. And they came from, you know, just little things like he would never say after you, he would say, lead on Macduff from Macbeth, right? Or one I remember, it really probably just me will ever remember it is, we'd come home and we'd co pull into the driveway and he'd stop the car and he'd say, raise high the roof beams carpenters yeah, I, I knew what that meant take off your seatbelt, get out and open up the garage door because it wasn't automatic and someone had to open it for him and i he always said crazy stuff so i didn't really think much about it but last year i asked him about it because i was thinking he goes oh yeah that was from you know jd salinger a short story and he told me an anecdote for it and it's like he was still sharp as a tack so you know and i think he was always looked at the bright side i mean Hey, Dad, how's that spaghetti? Oh, it's terrible, but at least there's a lot of it, you know. And, and you know, and I'd say there's some bright spots in what's come out of this. I mean, Mom passed in 09, so that gave him a good 12 years to travel the because he was devoted to her. He never left her side, and uh, but then he got to travel. With Tam, thank God, Tammy was there to be a caregiver and got to go all over the world. He he lost many friends, but he got to uh, at least some old friends, some of the Mom's family, and and don and a few others stayed stay you know lived through this and plus he made some new friends like ed who got him to take writing class and write a book so i mean i think he went out his way he went out uh, independent and uh, i think that's most important and i'd say the only thing um i guess in closing the thing i'm sad about is that he didn't hook up with one of those uh, widows late in life i mean we were trying to get him to do that even in the late years with mom but you know dad maybe next time <laughs> Thank you. So these are the things that Bob loved in life. Reading, voracious, recorded books, musicals and movies. He had his list of his, of his 20 favorites. Travel across the world. He loved sweets, loved Chinese food. Told me how dedicated he was to Ruth. When I ask you to tell me what are the words that describe Bob's legacy, how he will be remembered, how people described him. He said charismatic and social, no vices, funny and easygoing, never losing his temper, never raising his voice. He was a role model. He was creative with his plays, with his scripts, with his uh, parody lyrics to songs how he was the director of the Vision uh, Foundation for, for Blind Youth Camp, how unusual he was. There are so many memories, so many thoughts, so many images. So I ask that we pause for a few moments of silent memorial for each of us to remember Bob Schwartz in our own way. Let's pause for a few moments.
will remember you, Bob, and you will always be with us. May your memory be for a blessing. And may you rest in peace. Amen. At this time, we continue with the chanting of El Malay Rachamim. This, this is the traditional Jewish blessing, which asks that, that Bob's soul, that his legacy live on. And indeed, it does through those who love him, those who remember him. It lives on through the stories, through his students, through his deeds of goodness and loving kindness. Legacies do live on. And so, in a few moments, I'll ask uh, for you to please rise. For those who have difficulty standing, of course, you may remain seated. The rest of us, please rise for El Malay Rahamim, and then we'll remain standing for the mourners of Cadiz. El Malay Rahamim Shochem Amiromim Amitzeim and Ufani Kona Tafat Pante Ashkina. In Kedoshimu Teorim, Kezohar Harakia Mazirim, at Nismahat Robert, then Alexander Vehermin, Shahalah Leolamo, Bahal Harafamim, Yasirehu Besete Kerafab Leolamim. I swore it's all a kaihim at Nishmato Adonai Rafalato. They yan do up the Saloma Nishkavo. Then Omar Compassed with God, eternal spirit of the universe. Grant perfect rest in your sheltering of presence. To Robert Schwartz, the son of Alexander and Hermine, who has entered eternity. O oh God of mercy, let him find refuge in your eternal presence. And let his soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. For God is his inheritance. May he rest in peace. And let us all say, Amen. We continue with the mourner's cottage. And you can find the cottage in the uh, pamphlets that you receive uh, when you arrive today. The cottage prayer, it's about life. It's about wholeness. It's about peace. It is the prayer we say through which we affirm that life is good, that Bob's life was good. And with this prayer, we affirm that we will go on into life, bringing his memory with us. Those who wish we join together in Kadi. Yit Gadal, the Yit Kadash, Shemei Raba, the Alma Divera Hiru Ute, the Yamli Mal Ute, the Haye Hon, Uviome Hon, Uve Haye, the Hall, the Yisrael. Va agala uvi zaman akari ve imelu amen. Yehe shemei raba mevora le olam ule al mei al maya. Yit barach ve yish taba ve yit paar ve yit roman ve yit nase. Ve yit hadar ve yit ale ve yit halal shemei de kuresha. Berich hu le eila min ko bir hata ve shi hata tus ve hata ve nechemata da amiran ve alma ve imru amen yehe shlama raba min shemaya ve chayim aleinu ve ala ko yisrael ve imru amen. O se shalom bim romav, who ya se shalom, aleinu ve al kol Yisrael ve imeru, amen. May the source of peace send peace to all who mourn, and comfort to all who are bereaved among us. In Omar, 
Amen. And so the casket is lowered. The vault lid has been placed already. And now it is time for the ceremony of interment for the placing of earth in the grave. Our rabbis teach that to place earth in the grave now is considered one of the greatest of mitzvot, one of the greatest of righteous obligations. This is our obligation to see to it that Bob will be laid to rest with honor and dignity, and that it will be done right. Now that the casket is lowered, we'll have a chance to place earth. Tradition says three measures or more, either with our hands or with the shovels provided, however you wish. Three measures of more as a way of saying, I am here for Bob. I am here to see to it that he will be laid to rest with honor and with dignity and with love. Lech ishi Adonai, go your way for God has called you. Lech Adonai yihye imach, go your way and may God be with you. May your righteousness go before you, Bob. And may the glory of God receive you. So we place now, we place earth in the grave. And after everyone who wishes has placed earth, we'll have the conclusion of the ceremony. So I invite those who wish to place earth in the grave now. those participating today, the cemetery will require that you wear gloves. Uh, your winter gloves are fine. If you do not have gloves, I have them in here. So our service is now concluded. May our beloved Bob Schwartz rest forever in peace. And may our loving and merciful God be very near to us as we make our way through life without him. To the immediate family, now that you have fulfilled your obligation for funeral and burial, we offer the traditional Jewish words of condolence, speaking them now to you and to those who are joining us online and those here at the cemetery. I ask that you join with me in repeating these traditional words. Please uh, repeat after me. May God comfort you with all who mourn in Zion and Jerusalem. In Hebrew, we say, as you leave graveside now, may you come to know comfort, may you come to know peace, may you come to know healing, may you come to know shalom. So this is the conclusion of the service. We may have a few announcements and you can of course return to your cars, but anyone who would like to remain in a few moments, we will be filling the grave, we will be closing the grave.
uh, the rabbi has just done a very effective job of my announcements. Uh, for those online, as the rabbi said, thank you for attending. We are going to terminate the live stream in just a few moments. Thank you. And our thanks to everyone here at Memorial Park Skokie and, uh, and to Chicago Jewish Funerals. Thank you for your help.